Hi everyone! We have some work to do. Not that it's urgent, but still, it is convenient to do it right now because I have new root growth on my Lelia tenebrosa aurea. And given the fact that I grow 90% of my collection in Lekka with self-watering, with some exceptions with Ceramis, etc. or Lava Rock, but let's just say in general, inorganic. 90% of my collection is inorganic. I just thought it would be opportune to take the time and do a repot with you and talk about the cons of this growing method and what we can do about it to make sure that our orchids stay vigorous and healthy and continue to grow. This video was inspired by a comment um, Ed from Ed's Orchid made many, 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 I say many years ago, that got me to thinking about the method of growing in self-watering and why orchids would deteriorate after X amount of years. Because I haven't found that to be the case in my collection. Now, some orchids I've only had two years, but in the past, I've had orchids for quite some time and they were doing fine after five, seven years. It got me to thinking, and that's why I'm just trying to do some work and then still collect my thoughts, because one thing is what happens in your head and another thing is to verbalize it. But it got me to thinking that many people enjoy, including myself, the inorganic growing method because for one we can recycle our media and we say we it's less root disturbance for the orchid there you can see I've got new roots coming because the theory is the media being inorganic doesn't break down so why you know the theory being I just up pot Take the orchid out, don't disturb the roots, pot the orchid up into a bigger pot, fill around with inorganic media. And yes, that's fine, that will work. That is also good in certain circumstances if there is bad timing for the orchid to be repotted, but it had to be done. And you can't be radical. So joy of joys, I have a pot bound tenebrosa. We like that. But I want to get her out. I want to put her in a bigger pot. And I want to talk about why am I getting her out? Clearly, she is doing fine. She has still room to grow. Roots are going in the pot. Why am I disturbing her? The reason being that despite the fact that I grow in inorganic media, I cannot solely rely on the fact that my orchid is going to be fine just by potting her up and potting her up and continuously potting her up. I have to also bear in mind that, as you can see, she is pot bound. So what is happening with the oxygen supply and aeration in this method? I have to take everything into consideration exactly the same as if I was growing her in inorganic media. The advantage of in this and this growing method is purely the fact, well, there's more factors, but you know, we can recycle the media if you're growing inorganically. And the fact that there is less root disturbance in case of an emergency up pot, which can happen when a growth unexpectedly does a curveball and grows in the opposite direction and suddenly it's out of your pot. Then you can up pot and fill around and the orchid won't have known any different. But uh, that shouldn't be done in many, many cases. That just shouldn't be done. Inorganic media is practical, but uh, the orchid herself, honestly, doesn't know whether she's an inorganic or not. She just grows the way she grows and has her same needs. Look at that. And those needs are 
aeration around the roots. We can provide that with a lot of flushing to get oxygen into the system. And we can provide that by just potting her up in a bigger pot. And then there's more aeration around the roots. And all that works for a certain period of time, but eventually what we're going to put, go from bucket to bucket to bucket if the orchid gets that big, or we have to make a division depending on what the goals are. Eventually though, the root system has to be rejuvenated simply because it creates more space in the pot. And why is my old doohickey not coming out? Uh, there's a root caught underneath. We need to provide aeration in the pot, regardless of growing inorganic or organic. And when it comes to a very wet media, then it is paramount that we don't suffocate the roots. And it might not even be our own doing. Look at this nasty stuff in here from an old fern. It might not even be our own doing, but as you can see, how the orchid winds its way through the leka, the root ball becomes more and more compact. We have a great root system, we're happy, but actually she is starting to suffocate in this situation. So when it comes to repotting, again, not including emergencies, but bear in mind, if you have an emergency, remember what you did so that when the next time comes around, it is done at the right time. When it comes to repotting in inorganic media, it is not, in my opinion, sufficient to say, ah, it's inorganic media, I can fill around. It is, in my opinion, important to do what I'm doing now as best as possible because there is new root production. Now, when I was repotting my epidendrum, ciliaris, it was just in lava rock. And I had a root ball of similar, you know, it had taken the shape and eaten all the lava rock. And it was very difficult. Same with my cilogeny, my cilogeny pandorata. And in that case, when the root is, do not release, the media, then you can go radical and just go get in there and break everything. Or you get a pot large enough, large enough, not just the next centimeter up, but I'm talking, you know, remember if that root ball can do what it did in that pot, by the time the orchid is growing, that root ball is going to triple. It's not a question of double or not. It's going to triple and it's going to fill that space within a year and then we'll be back to revisit the same situation again year after year. And that is why growing in inorganic media is, in my opinion, no different when it comes to repotting with ensuring a healthy root system by making sure there is a new root system growing so that a proper cleanup can be taken place and no worries with regards to the root suffocating in on itself and then the entire orchid collapsing. So I'm getting new roots here on my Tenebrosa. She has never bloomed for me, but I'm thinking that maybe next year there's a good chance based on her vigor. I'm doing this at the end of August, can you believe it? But in this case, I'm taking her apart and starting fresh for another two or three years, depending on how she performs in the pot. And it is my understanding that this is the best way to ensure that semi-hydro, self-watering, Whatever media you're using inorganically for your orchids actually will be a continued success for many, many years and not just the first two or three years the orchid is in your possession. 
There's a certain complacency that can creep in when it comes to growing inorganically and I have noticed that with my behavior pattern as well. Until we don't understand exactly that it's the orchid that does the talking and not the media. The media is just something that we use to anchor the orchid, to keep her with us instead of having to leave her in the jungle because we grow in pots at least. In my case, I do. I grow a lot of my collection in a pot, even though I would love to be in a climate where I could, I could have them all slapped on trees. So the media is not what makes the orchid thrive or grow better. It is how healthy can we keep a root system. And one way to keep a root system super healthy is to give it oxygen, give it some space, and in inorganic media, that means that there is no need to normally consider the size of the pot. And I say that with caution because it would be crazy to go with 20 centimeter pot or 30 centimeter pot for this root ball. That's aesthetics, that makes no sense. But you can do it. Having said that, if you do it like that, don't think that you're done and dusted until the orchid grows out of the pot. As one has nothing to do with the other. Unfortunately, not living out in nature, nothing really ever gets flushed away. And I remember there was a fern growing in here. I took it out, but you can see how much debris is in and around the roots. That's unnecessary. That's something that has to be dealt with. It has to be taken care of. And even if you were not to have a resident fern growing in the pot, the root system, whether you grow inorganic or, in, or organic, especially with some orchids, they dump their root system and then start fresh anyway. So inadvertently, cleaning up the root system on their behalf is doing housekeeping that maybe in nature wouldn't be necessary because everything gets washed away from the trees. But see, I'm cutting away healthy roots. Now that would be kind of like, why are you doing this? This is ridiculous. Well, I'm rejuvenating the root ball. And I do not want in another two years, my orchid to collapse because she is suffocating by having such a vigorous root ball and she's suffocating in on herself. Uh, that's what I, that's my theory. That's how I operate when it comes to these circumstances. I do not distinguish between organic or inorganic. I repot when new roots come. Of course, when the orchid is not going to be in the pot much longer because she's got a direction of growth that is encroaching on the exterior of the pot. And I just wanted to share that with you because Ed's comment made me think and I was like, um, huh, okay, that's interesting. It's something I've never thought of because I've never encountered the problem. But he has, or he did, and he made me aware of it. And then it got me to thinking about when I was watching other channels and I'm like, okay. Again, the up potting and filling around with media in a case of emergency is perfect. That's why inorganic also gives us so many options. We can jump in and do something without disturbing the root system. Whereas with organic media, it's very difficult to up pot without ripping and tearing the roots apart. So his thought, his comment got me thinking. I very much appreciated the warning because it also gave me food for thought as to how can I communicate why my orchids have been doing well over several years, and I'm not just talking this collection, but in general, in this setup, and never did an orchid collapse on me. 
And that is, in my opinion, because I treated the orchid as if it was in organic media. I respected root growth, and then I cleaned her up, just like if I was getting her from a nursery and she had just come from bark. Bringing air into the root system, and not just relying on the inorganic media, thinking that it's doing the job for me. Because now, she's got plenty of air, new roots, no difference. She's going in a bigger pot, and it'll be another two years. I have done the least amount of damage to the roots that are there. I have cut viable ones away, but she is a branching root system as well. So I can be radical. I don't need to worry about any roots failing afterwards. She is accustomed to the environment that she's going back into. And again, she's starting on a new root system. But it is fundamental to remember that inorganic media is not a one-stop shop. The orchids don't know any different. The roots need to be addressed. The environment needs to be addressed. What's going on in the pot needs to be addressed. And my hands now need to be addressed. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, that's better. So I'm going to reuse my microfiber and I have to make a new doohickey. And here I want to show you, while I make the doohickey, my pastoral innocence. Beautiful. And she is the one that had an emergency at the beginning of this year. I also have a sheath. First sheath. Two new growths this year, back to back. This one first. This one followed with a sheath, so fingers crossed. She was the one, the candidate that I had to up pot fast because her outer pot broke. I was lifting it out to flush and the rim came off in my hands, which was very disappointing. So I had, a, I had real problems getting actually then the, the inner pot out of the mask because the rim had broken and she had become so pot bound that she became, it felt like concrete, the whole thing. So it wasn't the right time of year for me to repot her completely. I had no root growth. It was early this year, no new growths had started, no root growth, nothing. And that is the good thing about my principle or what I think is so great about inorganic media. I could take the root ball and just plonk it and fill around the edge. I have seen that happen with organic media as well. But there is decay of the old media mixed with the new. Whereas in inorganic media, in my opinion, the only decay will be what the roots are doing inside the pot where it was already established. And I'm not throwing anything away next year when it comes time to actually take her out of the pot, bash, literally I'm going to have to bash the root ball apart in order to do what I'm doing here with the tenebrosa. And that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna make a mess. It's gonna look scary, but it has to be done because I'm not gonna just keep up potting her. Now, this was a quick fix solution, really quickly in order to not distress the orchid too much at the beginning of the season. It was still cold, cold, you know, I, I, they weren't living outside yet, let's put it that way. And I had to do something fast. It was not the opportune time to go all ninja, for the lack of a better term, on the root ball. So that's this one. So whenever these roots come out, I will have to address this orchid. I want to see first if the sheath is going to produce some buds. It will be a first time bloomer for me. I don't want to miss that boat. But then I am absolutely, let's say, completely focused on this orchid to make sure I get the timing right and do what I just did with the tenebrosa. Right. Doohickey a go go. Microfiber a go go. I bet you saw my old doohickey. 
Yes. For these individual repots now, I am changing them one by one to my nice white ones that are not covered in sellotape. So the reason I'm not using the same lacquer that she came out of is because I need to clean that up. There's a lot of debris in there and I don't need to perpetuate any issues that I'm trying to avoid by cleaning her up like the way I just did. So let's see if we can position her to the back as best as possible. Sometimes the roots won't allow it even though the rhizome does. But we'll do the best we can. I've had her sprayed twice. While I was washing my hands, I sprayed her so that she doesn't dry out. And you know what? Again, if I do snap a root or two in this process now, I am not too concerned because I've got new roots coming. This is the perfect thing with regards to repotting at the right time. You can do it right, with confidence, no fear, Be radical about it and she will still do really really well. Her root system now has a lot more air, the media is nice and clean, everything the same as with organic. Inorganic again is just a question of I can take my old media, I'll take it to the kitchen and I will really flush it through and clean it up, boil it, sterilize it, and then it goes back into my lacquer bu bucket, ready to be used next time. I'm just gonna hold her and shake. At this point, I'm not ready to lift her up yet because I still have lacquer to fill. I am at the end of August. It's been an extremely hot day. But I'm doing this late afternoon. So the sun that is now a factor is not as strong as it was if I had done it any other time of day. I do not repot early in the morning because I still don't have my wits about me. <laughs> Perfectly honest. I do not have my wits about me. No repotting. And if I walk among my orchids and do my little morning checkup, how they've done it overnight, I walk slowly. <laughs> I turn slowly. And I definitely do not raise my arms. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Do we need the doohickey? I think it's best. She is secure in the pot, but I want these leaves to be more up so they don't catch anywhere. For the longest time, Lelia Tenebrosa was my icon on Instagram until my Maxima bloomed. It was the Lelia Tenebrosa Aurea. I hope I have a Tenebrosa here. No guarantees until she blooms. I have a feeling it could be next year. I have a feeling because this new growth here is absolutely, she's produced in my care so far. These two new growths that are the same height as what she came with. So she didn't skip a beat regarding how big she can grow. Acclimatization is another thing and I think we're there now. So I just make little hooks, one to the right, one to the left, and then I try to get my new growth in there. And if that is a bit too strangled, I loosen up a bit. I don't want to strangle the new growth, you know? <laughs> or snap it, that, would, that wouldn't be a good idea. But it's already pliable enough. And when she gets into the shelf, on my east side where the top guns are, she's actually facing away from the light. So if the light direction comes from here, she is facing that way so that the new growth, I train it 
as best as I can up more further into the pot. And there we have it. Lelia tenebrosa aurea. Radical root cleanup. Despite being in inorganic media, it is my way of ensuring a healthy root ball and that my orchids do not deteriorate in this setup. That I have them for five years, seven years, as opposed to going downhill after two or three. That was fully fertilized water right there. It, I don't have to worry, I didn't use hydrogen peroxide and she's in clean LECA, so complete little revamp. I hope you found this interesting. I know that maybe I said some things that could be a little bit uh, controversial. I appreciate dialogue. So, you know, leave your comments, your observations, your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I am open to the dialogue. This is how I make sure things don't go downhill. And I wanted to share that with you. It was an opportune time anyway, because she needed it. Thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.